is not the end! This is only the beginning! G'day, welcome to the first episode in a brand new Doctor Who podcast. Boy, there's lots of them out there, isn't there? But this one's called The Sirens of Audio, and it's based primarily on the big finish Doctor Who audio range. And by extension, we will be discussing in time some of the Doctor Who audio universe. But we're going to be sticking to audio because it is a medium that I love, and I am your host. My name is Dwayne, and as you can hear from my accent, I am located in Australia. Specifically, I'm located in Tasmania, which is an island off the south of uh, the eastern side of Australia, about an hour's flight from Melbourne. Uh, This episode, I'm going to be on my own, but I will be joined in future episodes by a co-host, so looking very much forward to that. Um, We're going to be talking about the very first Big Finish audio released in 1999 called The Sirens of uh, Time, which is where this podcast gets its name from. You see what we did there? On the subject of podcasts, so I'd like to just tell you a little bit about the podcast that inspired me to do this in the first place. And I was never one for podcasts. I'm a very late bloomer when it comes to listening to them. But there has been one that I have listened to right from the very beginning. And that is Proctor Who. I, I came across Proctor Who through Mark Atkinson, who's a musician, that I got to know through my time on radio when I was doing a music show. And I'm a big fan of progressive music. Mark Atkinson was a, and still is, a progressive musician. And I once interviewed him on my show. It wasn't long after that I came up with an idea for a segment on my radio show called Prog to Who, where I talk about new episodes of Doctor Who surrounded with a little bit of prog. At the very same time, or just before, I was ready to do that, I got a message from Mark saying, hey, would you like to listen to my new podcast called Prog to Who? Going to mix up a little bit of prog music and talk about the latest Doctor Who and, and do Doctor Who reviews. Can you believe it? It was actually my idea, Mark. No, it wasn't. <laughs> well, possibly we got the idea at the same time. Who knows how the universe works? But I've been following Mark Atkinson, Bob Fleming, Craig Stimson from the very beginning and those guys have kept me entertained for many, many years and through many episodes of their podcast, and I've really enjoyed that. Um, Of course, more recently, um, John Aitken and Suki Kark have joined Proctor Who. Bob Fleming's gone off and he's starting a a Trek This Out podcast uh, on uh, the new Picard series and Star Trek in general. Bob Fleming, how could you do that, you Doctor Who trader? But um, yeah, those guys uh, have really inspired me in terms of podcasting. The other one that I really like is is, is an Australian podcast called Flight Through Entirety that I started listening to uh, from a bunch of guys. Um, Brendan Jones, who who I know quite well from my time in fandom about 20 years ago, and uh, Nathan Bottomley, Richard Stone, those guys listened to all their early stuff right through uh, till more recently. They actually got me into the Avengers. I'd never seen the Avengers before, but because they talked about it so much, uh, I got into that show too. And I'm still, I'm I'm on series six now, slowly working my way through the Avengers, loving it. But Flight Through Entirety is the other podcast that's uh, really inspired me too. So thank you guys. Just a shout out to you. So uh, the two podcasts, Proctor Who, Flight Through Entirety, kudos to you. I'm listening to a lot more and I'm even creating my own. So there you go. But to tell you a little bit about me and my experience in Doctor Who fandom, I've been a Doctor Who fan all my life. Uh, in the mid-70s, uh, my dad 
hired a television set when I was in hospital. I used to come into work uh, and I had to spend some time in hospital as a kid. I used to come in after work and watch with me. And my first episodes, I recall, are Spearhead from Space. And the beauty of living in Australia is that Doctor Who was repeated and repeated and repeated and repeated quite regularly. So uh, mid-70s uh, would have been between the age of three and five yeah, so that's when I saw Spearhead from Space. I remember that. I remember snippets of um, the Time Warrior as well. And then there was Tom Baker throughout those years. I didn't watch so much on TV, but discovered Doctor Who more through the Target novelizations. Then in the mid-80s, when Colin Baker Season 22 was out, that was when I was uh, in my first year in high school, I think. And I was absolutely obsessed with that season of Doctor Who in particular Revelation of the Daleks was the story that got me so into fandom there was no getting me back out so I joined the Doctor Who fan club from that point on and I was eagerly anticipating new Doctor Who from then but as it happens because the ABC in Australia was still repeating Doctor Who the majority of Doctor Who I saw was the Pertwee era. They were, they were showing around that time. And so, yeah, mid-80s, John Pertwee, he was my doctor. So I can say he's my doctor, but I was not born in that particular time. I'm a bit younger than that. So always heavily obsessed with Doctor Who. Started uh, recording Doctor Who episodes off the air with my beta cassette recorder. And so I had a large beta collection of off-air Doctor Whos, starting with... If I recall correctly, yes, it was the Robots of Death was number one in my collection. And um, so Robots of Death, Talons of Wang Chiang, Horror of Fang Rock, they were the three. They're the three that I've watched more than anything in the history of Doctor Who. So, yeah, Talons being my favourite story. Although it's not cool to like Talons of Wang Chiang these days, is it? A lot of the podcasts that I listen to, they, they really hassle it, don't they? So I started getting into the new adventures, the missing adventures during the wilderness years. was very excited when the telly movie came out. I was hoping that uh, a series would be produced. Unfortunately, Fox went with Sliders. I also was watching Sliders at the time, which I really enjoyed. But I thought it was rubbish compared to Doctor Who. However, I think in the long run, it was better that it turned out the way it did. Yeah, it was a few years later that Sirens of Time was released. I do remember that coming out, but I was sort of not keeping so much in touch with Doctor Who news. It was uh, not until about 2002, uh, a couple of years later, that someone loaned me a copy of their Chimes of Midnight CD. And it was the Chimes of Midnight that got me instantly hooked on audio because I love McGann as the Doctor and I wanted to... I wanted to experience McGann and yeah, what a way to to experience it. We're going to be talking about Chimes of Midnight over the next month or so on this very podcast. But let's talk a little bit about Big Finish themselves. Big Finish as a company have been going for over 20 years now, but Doctor Who wasn't their first release. Their first releases happened about a year earlier when they acquired the license for the uh, the Virgin range of new adventures uh, of Professor Bernice Summerfield. So they're adapting some of those to audio. But the history of Big Finish goes back even further than that. And you can get a full in-depth history on Big Finish if you go to bigfinish.com and look for the, for the title, uh, Talking About My Regeneration. It's a documentary, an audio documentary that that went out on Doctor Who magazine, I think, that's now available for free on the Big Finish website. And it goes behind the scenes of the first audio Sirens of Time and has some very interesting insights about how we came to have Big Finish audios. Now, it all, it all started when an amateur company was started in the early 80s by Gary Russell and Bill Baggs called Audio Visuals. And for, the, for three seasons, they produced a number of, um, of audio visual stories of really, really high quality. Amateur, of course. Um, Nicholas Briggs was involved as well. But I'm not exactly sure when Nicholas came on. I, I can't recall whether he came on for the final season because there was a bit of a gap between the third and fourth season of audio visuals. But anyway, the audio visuals were of a really high quality. Then Bill Baggs decided to go and start BBV, Bill Bags Video. And if through the wilderness years in the 90s, 
there were quite a few Doctor Who related but never Doctor Who mentioned series of videos, many of them made by Bill Baggs at BBV. And he also did a lot of audios as well. So he had audio adventures for sale before Big Finish, but he was getting around the licensing issue by not mentioning the Doctor by name or any of the the characters by by name or anything that was copyright or trademarked or whatever, but he would allude to it. So we knew it was talking about Doctor Who, but it wasn't a direct licensed product of Doctor Who. So when Bill Baggs went off and started his company, Nick Briggs came on. I think that might have been when he came on for the last season. He was playing the Doctor and they made some great audios throughout that time. And in actual fact, there were some great guest actors as well throughout that time. They made 29 audios in total over the four seasons that they did. And they had such guest actors as Peter Miles, you know, Peter Miles who played NIDA in Genesis of the Daleks. They had Michael Wisher also from Genesis of the Daleks. Nabil Shaban who played Sil. He, he was playing parts as well. They had these guys um, playing these parts. So they got were able to get some of those actors to, to be involved as well, which was really cool to be involved in those amateur productions. Several years after the fourth season, so the fourth season ended in the early 90s, the TV movie came out and Gary Russell was quite involved with the TV movie. He novelised the, the movie and he approached the BBC because they were getting the licences back from, uh, from America and overseas bringing them back in-house. So he was asking the BBC at that time whether he could obtain a licence to produce official Doctor Who audio. But the BBC was a bit precious at the time. They declined it. A couple of years later, Gary Russell approached Virgin and negotiated with Virgin to do the Benny Summerfield stories, um, the early ones. Benny Summerfield, by the way, is still going at Big Finish today. So it's the, it's the longest-running character in Big Finish. They went decided to go back, Jason Hay Gallery and Gary Russell went back to the BBC once again, gave him a couple of samples of these audio CDs, uh, the Benny CDs, and Steve Cole at the BBC, who was working on the Missing Stories collections at the time, uh, I think at the time that that documentary I mentioned um, talking about my regeneration, Steve Cole on there mentions that he was working on a forthcoming release of The Massacre. So that's what they were doing. They were releasing those old soundtracks at the time. And it was Steve Cole who suggested to the BBC that, look, we don't have the finances to make these audio productions ourselves. This company is offering to do that. Why don't we give them a license to do it? And they agreed. So that's where it began. It began almost 20 years earlier with this commencement of audio visuals. I think, I think that company started in 1983, 1984. And if you want to hear some of those versions or some examples of audio visuals, you can find them all to listen to at archive.org slash details slash Doctor Who audio visuals. And it's interesting that some of the titles in there that are in those audio visuals were adapted to later big finish Stories, stories such as the Mutant Phase, which is a Dalek story, Sword of Orion, that's a Cyberman story, Minuet in Hell, and Cuddlesome. Cuddlesome was another one that was remade as a as a special uh, annual release, I think, or was it a Doctor Who magazine release? Can't remember. But anyway, I can highly recommend the audio visuals if you if you want to have a listen to some of that early high quality amateur Doctor Who audio universe content. Very, very good stuff. So we come to the end of 1998. Gary Russell reapproaches the the BBC. They get the license to do Doctor Who audios. Thanks to Stephen Cole. Thank you very much. He comes on as executive producer. So, and then we come to the three actors who played the Doctor who were available to work on this audio. It was originally made in March 1999 not originally made, it was made and released in July of 1999. And it starred Sylvester McCoy, Colin Baker and Peter Davison. How was this going to be received? How was Doctor Who going to go as an official licensed audio medium product? How do you go when you listen to audio? 
I'm curious to know. Because I find a lot of people are just so anti-audio, they won't even bother giving them a try. And my personal opinion, and one of the reasons I do this podcast, is that I enjoy the stories a lot more in audio than I do on the TV. But I think what people find difficult about audio is that it's a much more involved process becoming in, engaged with an audio production. Because it's, it's almost like reading a book. They do, there is a reason they call them audio books. With a, with a book, you've got to take time, you've got to sit down, and you're focusing all of your senses on the book, including your imagination, to make up the story that you're reading. It's similar with an audio. Some of the imagination part is taken with the audio, but you've still got to fill in the visuals with your imagination, as opposed to TV, which just dumps it all in front of you, and you can be as lazy as you like. Um, you don't have to do any work to get any of that audio visual stimulus put into your brain. It's done for you. With an audio production, you've actually got to become involved. And I find that in those early days, I used to listen to audios on the stereo. And I used to listen to audios in the car, in places that it was easy to be distracted. So if you if you get distracted from an audio play, it's very easy to lose your place. And when you get back to it and, and fully focus on it again, you're not quite sure where it's up to. So that's what makes audio a little bit more difficult. But these days, with the quality of headphones, since having small children in the house, again, and having babies, I've had to... I've been forced to listen to music and audio through headphones rather than the speakers like I used to in the old days. So the old days, <laughs> it was I call that the early 2000s, the old days. There you go. Now I'm feeling very old. But the headphone experience makes it a lot easier to stay focused and stay engaged with audio. But you've got to put in the effort too. And I think that's why a lot of people give the audios a miss because they don't want to put in the effort. But I would encourage anyone to put in the effort to listen to these audio productions, particularly if you're a Doctor Who fan, because they are so, so rewarding. So let's dive into it with, uh, but we'll start off with, uh, with a trailer. Let's have a listen. I think I've broken something. What about you? Yes, I'm fine, thanks. Oh, yeah, I rather think I broke your fall. Oh, sorry. I'll survive. Oh, can you two help me up? Yes, okay. Yes. Yeah. No! Careful! Oh, careful. Oh, we're going to make a fine team with you two having to help me. Whoa. Fire torpedo! I'm not a delegate. I'm known as the Doctor. I'm a Time Lord from the planet Gallifrey, and my TARDIS was recently blown apart in a spatio-temporal explosion, which I imagine is now known to you as the Kurgon Wonder. Does that cover everything? Ooh. That was a little too close for comfort. Oh my God! Listen, Doctor. There's another one coming in. Get down! The Time Lords really do want me dead. Destroy him! Okay, so some production details about the story. Um, the artwork is fantastic. You can have a look at the description in the, the, in the podcast uh, to get a picture of the artwork. Um, and by the way, Big Finish Audio, Doctor Who Monthly Audios numbers 1 to 50 are all available free on Spotify. So... I encourage anyone because some of the best audios are in that first 50. Uh, some are not, well, I don't know if they're the, yeah, I would say they're the best. They're also my favorite, probably because I've listened to them more than any of the others because they were there wasn't as many around back then. So you don't, now that there's so many, I don't listen to them over and over like I used to. So some of those early ones I've listened to quite a few times. But if you don't want to go and um, outlay for brand new audios right now, the first 50 Doctor Who monthlies are all available on Spotify. So do yourself a favour. I'm going to be the Molly Meldrum of Doctor Who audio plays, and I'm going to say do yourself a favour 
and get to Spotify and listen <laughs> to The Sirens of Time if you haven't heard it already. It's fantastic. And all of the first 50. We're going to be doing recommendations uh, during this podcast and some of them will be from that 50 um, that you can have a listen to. So James Arnott uh, did the cover. Nick Briggs was very involved in this one. Not quite so involved in many of the other early audios, but um, obviously he's behind. He's one of the executive producers of Big Finish now. But for this one, he was the director, the music and sound designer. Uh, he wrote it. Um, and the producers were Gary Russell, Jason Hay Gallery, uh, and Stephen Cole was there as executive producer. So this uh, is a is a multi doctor story, but only it, it's four episodes. But episode one starts with the seventh doctor. Episode two this uh, is the fifth doctor. Episode three is the sixth doctor. Episode four, all the doctors in together. So that's uh, an issue with multi doctor stories is that uh, great great concept. We all love to see the doctors together. It's all, we all find it exciting. But when the idea is actually executed, it's not often the most exciting thing we've ever seen in Doctor Who. It sometimes doesn't translate. So Big Finish were aware of this from the start. And they have when they've done multi-doctor stories in, in, in the future, they're always aware that they needed to do something a little bit different. So um, that's why each Doctor had their own instalment for this one and then didn't get together until the last half hour episode. So my my first impressions of this, when I first heard it, were I, I wasn't overly impressed with it. Because as I said, remember I said that I listened to to this on speakers or in the car or whatever. So there was always often background noise when I was listening to audios. I mentioned that Chimes of Midnight was my very first audio, and that is such a captivating audio that you, it, it forces you, no matter how you're listening to it, it forces you to stop and listen. Um, Sirens of Time, not so much, but I, on reviewing it for this podcast, I've listened again in the headphones, and it actually is extremely high-quality sound design. I can tell you that. A very enjoyable listen. Episode one that with uh, deals with the Seventh Doctor. I've read some reviews online that say that Sylvester McCoy was the weakest Doctor in this. Well, that's up for debate. I I don't see that. I don't see why people are saying that Sylvester was the weakest. They might think it was the weakest story, and I can explain why people might think that way in a second. But I think. In terms of translating from the television personas to the audio, Sylvester McCoy and Colin Baker head and shoulders above uh, Peter Davison. Peter Davison is awesome, but simply for the fact that he was in his 20s when he started making Doctor Who on TV, his voice naturally has gotten older in the, in the almost 20 years since he started to the Sirens of Time. So Peter Davison, in my opinion... Um, is lacking a little bit there in terms of voice. And vocally, the most enjoyable for me, vocally, was Colin Baker, because his voice is, is just amazing. He, you'll notice in the 20 years since Sirens of Time that Colin's, Colin's voice, particularly in the last five years, has really aged a lot. But because we've listened to <laughs> Big Finish audios over these years, we don't notice so much. But back then when Sirens of Time came out, Colin Baker's voice was just sensational. He, it's no wonder that he was the favourite of the Big Finish audios in those early days. As far as I'm concerned, he was he was probably my... my no, not probably. He was my favourite Big Finish audio doctor, purely for the fact that he sounded so good. Um, and there was so much potential that he... That he wasn't able to realise in the television series that he could now in this new format. But anyway, going back to the first episode, we've got Sylvester McCoy landing on a planet, finding, uh, sort of being compelled to go off course by this uh, ethereal sound, ethereal singing. Um, the word sirens might give, you, might give you a bit of a clue. And he's compelled to go off course and finds himself on a jungle planet um, where he hears someone calling out for help who's sinking in quicksand. That's how the story starts with Sylvester McCoy. After the, after the opening 
uh, music finishes. Before that, I should go back and mention that the opening scenes are set on Gallifrey. And we've got um, a character called uh, Coordinator Van Cell, played by Anthony Keach. And we've got Michael Wade playing the president, who, who's, who are there at the pre-opening credits. No, it's not really credits. The pre-opening music um, to this episode, talking about an emergency, a temporal emergency that the Doctor is at the centre of. And that's how it all starts. So instantly we're, we're on Gallifrey with a couple of characters. Um, it turns out Van Cell is, is the coordinator of the Celestial Intervention Agency. He actually has a big role to play in Big Finish Audios uh, up until uh, Neverland, I think it is. Neverland? I'm not sure what number that is, but it's the final Paul McGann story of the second season before the, the 45th anniversary special. Or was it the 45th? No, the 40th special, Zagreus. We're introduced to those Gallifreyan characters, which is cool. But then we go back to the jungle planet where McCoy is, and we have this very interesting character. Very, very interesting character. And I think this is what puts people off this episode. It's not Sylvester McCoy. It's this character, Ruth Lee, that turns up. And she is this uh, harpy type of character with this really grating voice with a with some kind of uh, European, German accent um, that, that turns up. And it was quite jarring from, from recollecting how I felt the first time I heard the episode. I thought, oh, who the heck is this? Who the heck is this person? Um, but after listening to it, and particularly because Ruth Lee is played by Maggie Stables. So Maggie Stables is, a, is an actress who became an actress as a second career. She used to be a French teacher. She worked with Nicholas Briggs about 10 years earlier, and Nick brought her on to play this character, Ruth Lee. As it happens, a little while later, Maggie Stables goes on to become probably the most loved and the best portrayed companion character of the Big Finish audios, Evelyn Smythe. She's a companion to the Sixth Doctor. And Maggie Stables is the consummate, actress when it comes to that part. She is perfect as Evelyn. Probably the, probably my favourite audio companion. At least the audio companions that have been invented specifically for, for audio. And she works so well with Colin Baker. But here in this story, Maggie's playing a really strange character called Ruth Lee, who's working with, uh, with a planet to, uh, to get this character of Sandcroft knocked off. We don't know that at the time at the early part of the episode, but she's working as a nurse to this uh, old war criminal prisoner called Sancroft. And I love, I absolutely love some of the dialogue that goes on between, between these two. It's absolutely priceless, particularly when, when Sancroft is talking about the quality of conversation uh, between them. But I do so enjoy our little chats. Some may call it spitting, belching and passing wind, but to me, your every utterance is simply music to the ears. And it turns out that Sankroff is a knight of Valisha. So you've got to, it's a, it's spelt double A, you've got to pronounce it Shah at the end of it. And the knights of Valisha are... Uh, characters who are going to go on and particularly one night of Valisha is going to have a pivotal role in Nicholas Briggs Dalek Empire series which was not too far down the track and the knight of Valisha off the top of my head I cannot think of his name but I know it was played by Gareth Thomas also known as Blake from Blake 7 awesome portrayal absolutely awesome but I digress from this story the knights of Valisha this is the first appearance of the knights yeah this sancroft is is an old war criminal that's being kept on this planet alive and ultimately uh, some assassins come and try and knock him off ruthley's involved and this character that the seventh doctor rescues from the quagmire that sort of becomes a pseudo companion is an interesting one she is she's played by sarah mowat and she goes into a period the next couple of episodes as well so the episode kind of ends on a on a cliffhanger that doesn't immediately get resolved because we go into episode two with going straight into the peter davison story 
And what I love about the Peter Davison story, and a lot of people say this is the strongest story, and I think just as the portrayal of Ruth Lee is what gets on people's nerves in episode one, in episode two, I think it's the portrayal of Captain Schweiger in this episode by Mark Gatiss that wins everyone over. He's a really sympathetic character, a really nice man for a German. <laughs> um, it's actually quite a basic story. Um, the Doctor finds himself away from the TARDIS and he tries to get back to the TARDIS. I couldn't help but think with the Time Lords trying to contact the Doctor, it sounded a lot like the scene from Enlightenment where the White Guardian was trying to contact the Peter Davison Doctor. Very, very similar vibe to it. Yeah, so it's just a case of the Doctor being separated from the TARDIS, trying to get back to it, because the Time Lords told him to do so. And yeah, just the, the events there that happen don't really come to fruition until right at the end of the fourth episode. We don't know what the... It ends on a cliffhanger with the Doctor floating, trying to get into the TARDIS with uh, bombs going off. Episode three, the Colin Baker episode. As I said before, Colin Baker's voice is just superb. It just drips with honey. It's that good. It's like he hasn't been away for a single second. It's like he was never booted off the show in the first place in such an unceremonial way. The story itself is probably the, the least, it's to my mind, the least memorable story out of the three. Um, because there's a, a creature in there that's described as being related to the, the, the creature in the time monster. So everything's about time, time swirling around. Once again, the Time Lords are trying to contact the Sixth Doctor, just like they had done the previous Doctors, to try and stop them from taking actions that they would have normally taken. Once again, Sarah Mowat's there. We're not quite sure who she is. Interesting character, so we're, we're questioning throughout the episode who this character is, but we're not quite sure. I enjoyed the episode, but if I was to pick an episode that was the least memorable for me, story-wise, it would be this one. But the most interesting <laughs> is possibly this one, just for the simple fact of hearing Colin Baker just take back to the Doctor like he'd never left it. And I think it's a joyous moment when Colin Baker is back as the Doctor. Episode four, we have all the Doctors back together to, to join up with this threat because Gallifrey has been invaded by the Knights of Valicia. Gallifrey seems to get invaded a lot, doesn't it? By different beings. And this is uh, another one of those occasions. So this is where the... The openings pre-title scenes at the start of episode one and all the cliffhangers for the Doctors, they all start coming back together. We start to find out Sarah, Sarah Mowat, her character, because she, uh, she comes in episode four as Knight Commander Lyena. So who is she? Knight Commander Lyena, uh, the Temperon from episode three. What, she try, what is the Temperon trying to do? It all starts coming together in episode four. So it's, it's a very, it's a kind of a timey-wimey type thing, very well thought out by Nicholas Briggs, uh, in my opinion. And all comes together nicely. You have your multi-doctor banter going on, which is pretty typical. And I, th I, I really enjoyed it. So for anyone who's listening to Big Finish Audio or who wants to dip into Big Finish Audio, definitely go for Sirens of Time first time around. I, I remember talking to someone from Big Finish once and asking them what the biggest seller was. And it's always this one. And I said, but there's so much better stories. And they said, yeah, but this is always the first. So the first one is always going to be the, the best seller and the one that people um, look to as a starting point, obviously. And because it's available for free now on Spotify, it's uh, even more accessible to everyone. So I can only wholeheartedly endorse the Sirens of Time and recommend that everyone give this a go. It's a cracker of a story, really well thought out. It's timey-wimey before Stephen Moffat was even on the scene. Um, <laughs> it's all over the place. If you love Stephen Moffat, timey-wimey stuff, well, this is, this is Nicholas Briggs style. 
And that's one question I, I it always sticks in my mind. The the authors, some of the authors from Big Finish have gone on to 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 write for the TV series, but Nicholas Briggs has never been one of them. And I just don't understand why, because Nick Briggs' stories, man, he's got he puts some thought into them and they are sensational stories. Um, we'll touch on some of those in, in due course over the podcast. So now I give the Sirens of Time a hearty 3.5 headphones out of 5, and I'll recommend to anyone, go to Spotify, grab it, have a listen to it, and listen to it with headphones. You won't be disappointed. Thanks very much for listening to episode one of the Sirens of Audio. What did you think? Oh, my goodness. You can leave me some feedback if you like. Leave us a comment on Twitter. You can contact me there, which is um, Audio Sirens on Twitter. Sirens of Audio at gmail.com if you want to send me an email. If you want to keep with up, keep up with our website, it's sirensofaudio.com. It's quite easy, really. Just do a search for Sirens of Audio. We'll be there. You can even, if you go to, to where we're hosting the podcast at anchor.fm slash Sirens of Audio, you can leave a voice message on what you think of the podcast, what you think of the story we reviewed, um, and we can feature your voice message in future episodes. So I encourage you to do that too. What I'd love you to do, if you want to do that, is I'll tell you what we're doing over the next month. So we're going to record these podcasts in blocks of, of four episodes. So um, so it's not a weekly thing for us, but it will be for you once it gets going, but it won't be for us. So the first four stories have been decided on that we're going to be talking about in depth with my co-host. I'll keep that a secret for now, just to, to keep you in suspense about who the co-host might be. But the stories that we're going to discuss are my favorite, Chimes at Midnight. We're also going to talk about, that's going to be one episode. We're also going to be talking about the Psychic Circus, which I... Reading the blurb, I'm not sure if it's a prequel or a sequel. There seems to be something timey-wimey going on there with uh, the the most recent monthly Doctor Who audio psychic circus. We're also going to be looking at Eldrad Must Die. And we're going to be looking at The Reaping. So they're the next four audios that we're going to be considering on the Sirens of Audio over the next four episodes. So feel free to give us uh, your feedback. Send us your thoughts on those episodes. As I said, I'll say it again, anchor.fm slash sirens of audio. You can leave a little message clip. I've tried doing it myself, but Anchor won't let me do it. They say, nice try, but you can't send yourself a message. So send us a message and we'll include it in our podcasts in the future. So without uh, further ado, I'm going to say farewell for now. And don't forget to listen to Doctor Who Audio. Because Doctor Who Audio rocks. out the bit about wiping my bottom, you old charmer.